Next into the clinic, 35-year-old Michelle has an embarrassing problem which has meant a lifetime of ridicule and isolation. My condition started when I was about 14. It's made me very anxious and self-aware and prevents me from going out and enjoying myself. People can be very cruel and I feel humiliated by their response. Nice Hi. to meet you. Now, what can I do for you? I'm here because every time I've got my period, there's a fishy odour. I've um, seeked medical help for this before and was often turned away and told that I was being paranoid. I don't actually notice the odour myself, I can't detect it, but I notice other people's reactions. They'll like turn their head away, hold their noses. So I guess it's difficult because when you go to the doctors, you say, you know, I've got an odour. Hmm. I can't actually spell it, but I think other people mm. can smell it. Yeah. Do you have any discharge associated with this? Not at all. No. No. So I was referred to uh, gynaecology and they did vaginal swabs and found no infection at all. Mm. So that's when I started to research my symptoms. And I did come across a disorder called fish odour syndrome or trimethyl amenorrhea. I had a test for this disorder and it was found that I, I did actually have this disorder. Fish odour syndrome is a rare inherited condition and it's more common in women than men. It's caused by the body's failure to break down a chemical called trimethylamine, which has an odour often described as fishy, although it can vary. This builds up in the body and is released in the sweat, urine and breath. Some people have a constant smell and others only have intermittent symptoms. I suppose if you look at your genetic makeup and imagine it, it's a big novel, that somewhere within there, there's a tiny little typo. Yeah. And that typo means that you haven't got an enzyme that basically oxidizes trimethylamine to oxidized state, which is the state that doesn't smell. I think we should get you seen by one of the two experts in the British Isles. So if you're happy with that, I think let's, let's you've waited 20 years, my yeah. God, let's get on and do it. That'd be great. <laughs> Our distinctive scent comes from sweat, breath and urine, which are protective mechanisms to rid our bodies of toxins and control our internal metabolism. Hormones, stress, illness, puberty and diet can all determine our particular odour. Michelle started to notice other people's reactions to her smell at the age of 14 when she began her period. No matter how much I changed myself or washed, it didn't seem to make a difference. People would think that the smell was coming from my private area and that added to the embarrassment. Just, you know, saying, it's Michelle, Michelle stinks. So I became more and more isolated. Having a partner or a relationship, friends, they don't frighten me. I'd love to have those things. And I feel that this disorder has, you know, stopped me from doing the things that I really wanted to do in life. Find out later in the show if Michelle has any success in managing her condition. While some of us could be trying a lot harder to get rid of our nasty niffs, for 35-year-old Michelle, her condition makes it impossible. No matter how much I changed myself or washed, it didn't seem to make a difference. Michelle has fish odour syndrome, which is a rare disorder where the body can't break down a chemical called trimethylamine, which has a fish-like odour. Dr Pixie wants Michelle to learn how to control her odour. So sends her to see Dr. Robert Lachman, an expert in metabolic diseases. It's not always easy to smell anything at all when you see patients with trimethylaminuria, but certainly there are some cases where you get a very strong smell of, of fish. But in other cases, it isn't necessarily fish, and the smell can be described as a lot of different things. Uh, certainly um, sewage, sort of a faecal odour, can be uh, associated with it as well. Trimethylaminuria is diagnosed by looking at the levels of trimethylamine in the urine. So you've had your urine test done, and this is really quite clear. Um, the trimethylamine is really very high, at 45.3, and the upper limit of the normal range is about 11. Right. Okay. So that would be giving off a really strong odour at that point. Yeah, though. absolutely. Was this taken during one of your periods? Yes. Yeah. So although we don't have any cure for the disease, because we can't make the enzyme work properly again, mm. uh, we can treat it. And the first way to do that is to try and do it by diet. 
And so if you follow a diet that's low both in trimethylamine and in choline, mm. then that'll reduce the amount of trimethylamine coming into the body from the gut. Trimethylamine is only present in fish, but bacteria in the gut can make it from a chemical called choline, which is present in many foods such as eggs, soya and some meats. As well as a controlled diet, other things that can help manage the condition are antibiotics to reduce the bacteria in the gut, probiotic tablets with friendly bacteria, tablets containing charcoal that bind the trimethylamine to the gut, and riboflavin which can boost the enzyme activity. Okay, so what I suggest we do then is, coming up to your next period, maybe for a day or two beforehand, you try following the diet through your cycle and then send another urine sample during that period and hopefully okay. the TMA levels will then have come down and then we can um, see you again uh, let you know the results. Right, thank you. Good, see you next time. I think Michelle's story is very typical for patients with this disease and the disease and the symptoms have had a huge effect on her life. She's really not been able to hold down a job to form the sort of social relationships that the rest of us regard as absolutely normal. And obviously that has a terrible effect on people's life. And when the disease is actually potentially curable, it's obviously sad that it's taken so long for it to be diagnosed. Find out later if Michelle can get her fishy odour under control. Later on, Dr Pixie met Michelle, who suffers from fish odour syndrome. I notice other people's reactions. They'll, like, turn their head away, hold their noses. She referred Michelle to see a specialist, who's put her on a diet low in foods which contain the chemicals trimethylamine and choline. Michelle's condition means her body cannot break down these chemicals around the time of her period, which makes her smell of rotting fish. The diet's really, really tough um, because it's so restrictive. I can't eat uh, meat or fish. Things like eggs, beans, even things with wholemeal grains in. I'm just glad that I don't have to be on the diet all the time. Having followed the diet around the week of her period, Michelle gave a urine sample to test the levels of trimethylamine in her body. Dr Lackman calls her with the results. So the normal chance. range is... 2.5 to 10.9. The original urine you sent, the trimethylamine levels were 45.3. The sample you sent at the beginning of January, they come down to 15.1. Okay, so that's a lot so better. Still just above the normal range, but they're about a third of what they were before, so I think that's really good. Okay, and at that level, would you say there there is still an odour, or do you think there well, wouldn't at that be? that particular level, one would hope it would be very low. It's a big difference. It's given me more faith in the diet because it seems to be actually working. A few days later, Michelle comes back to the Embarrassing Bodies Clinic to update Dr Pixie with her results. How are you, Michelle? I'm not too bad. The TMA levels have reduced significantly. Fantastic, in response to diet. Yeah, maybe you could tell me because it's actually... I'm on that time now, so I don't mm -hmm. know if you can detect anything at all. I can't smell anything. So, that's good. <laughs> it means that the diet's obviously working and I just need to keep on with the diet and possibly take other supplements to bring it down to a normal level. Sitting here today, do you feel a little bit more confident than when we first met? I'd say I'm slightly more confident because something's actually been done about the problem now and I'm hoping that I'll be able to socialise more and, you know, make new friends and build new relationships and lead a normal life. Personally, I cannot smell anything today. Mm. Um, so I would say keep going with the diet and do keep in touch with us and let us know how you're getting on. I will Lovely do. Lovely to see you back Okay, again. thank you very, very much. Very welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. If you're suffering from any of the conditions on tonight's show, go to our website at channel4.com forward slash bodies to ask questions or share your experiences. If you've been inspired by the stories you've seen in this series and you've been worrying about your own embarrassing medical problems, then why not consider applying to be on the show? You can find all the details on our website.